Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're all doing well. Last night we had a pole flyer and the cutout that caused the pole flyer, or what's left of it, broke perfectly down the center, which I thought was pretty cool. Give us a good idea of the cross section of the inside of the cutout, which we'll take a closer look at in a minute. But I wanted to go over more about how that caused the pole to catch fire and show you guys a few things. Anyways, I think you'll find it interesting. I'm not gonna do any editing on this one, so bear with me. I'll try to pause the screen a few times as we take a look at things, but I think you'll enjoy this. I just don't have time to do any editing at all right now. But for those of you who watch my videos, see cutouts in most videos. Very common piece of equipment in, in our world as linemen and on the power line grid. All kinds of different shapes and sizes, manufacturers. I've got one up in the area here, so we'll flip the camera around. So most, most transformers, unless it's an old CSP, which we'll cover in another video, but most transformers have a cutout or a switch that's feeding the transformer. So that's this guy right here. And at the leftmost side of the screen where that little ring is, that's the, the fuse barrel or the cutout door where there's a fuse link inside. When there's a short in the transformer or an animal gets into the primary side of the wire, short in the secondary, that's what causes that huge bang when most people say a transformer blew up. That's just the fuse blowing. Most of the older cutouts like this one is made out of porcelain. A lot of them are discontinued and they're now made out of kind of plastic. Totally didn't mean to flip the camera around there. But what happens is you have the 7200 volts coming into the top of the cutout. Let's go back to the truck, get a better idea what we're looking at. All right, so right here we've got a cutout. It hangs on the pole via this bracket here. You have a connection right here where your number four copper wire comes out of that up to the main line. And you can see where there's a brass plate to carry the current at a very low resistance path into this section here where you have the cutout door. There's just no door in there right now. That's the barrel. It travels through the barrel into this brass, again through that brass plate out of your bottom connector and into the transformer. So even though this is what carries the current, it's all metal. This, this whole section is conductive. So this steel here would be considered energized. Now, steel bracket, obviously between this bracket and the top and bottom portions, they're not connected or else it would be a dead short. So. Speaking of a dead short, it's not really a dead short because in our world, again, you have conductors, which are typically metal, very low resistance. You have insulators, which are rubbers, plastic, glass, and then you have semiconductors, which would be wood. So let's go take a look at the pole again. All right, so back over to the pole. Let's say, for example, the porcelain insulation on that cutout were to fail and it's gonna energize the bracket into that steel L-shaped bracket, which is connected to the pole. Get a little bit better look here. Now, kind of a bad example, because you can see there's a piece of copper wire coming from that lightning arrestor, which is really close, and going down, which is crimped onto the neutral and the ground wire. But if that insulator were to fail, that's dry wood, it's a semiconductor, so it's not gonna be a dead short. The current's certainly gonna try and travel through that wood, towards ground or anything else that's conductive that's at a different potential. When electricity travels through something that's not very conductive, it causes heat. So you get a little bit of fog, some, some heavy mist or some rain, soaking that set pole, leaving mineral deposits on it and whatnot. It's gonna make that dry wood just a little bit more conductive, possibly enough to travel through the wood into that copper. Now when it's traveling through that wood, it's going to be a high resistance path, so it is going to cause heat. And what happens is it actually causes enough heat to burst into flames. So oftentimes when you have a cutout failure or an insulator, pull top insulator, these guys are also porcelain. One of those guys fails and the current tries tracking through the wood, let's say in this cross arm for example. It's got to go through all that wood, it would then probably go down that cross arm brace and probably then into that number four copper off that lightning arrestor. 
Throughout that entire time, there's going to be a ton of heat generated inside that wood until eventually the pole bursts into flames. So most times when this does happen, it's when it's raining out, or really heavy fog, high humidity. If we don't get any rain for two or three weeks as insulators, literally tens of thousands of them just in my area alone, are slowly breaking down, you get a couple weeks of real dry weather and then you get some rain, that's when you'll get one or two pole fires. So last night was a perfect example. So this is a porcelain cutout. You can see very similar to this guy here. We have a bracket where the door goes. So he would have went right inside there. And then the bottom portion of the door, which would have been inside here. And then of course, the rest of the cutout. So before breaking, it would have looked something like that. Very similar to this guy here, which has the load break feature, which we won't cover in today's video. But when this guy was failing, obviously that, that crack is really, really obvious. But it would have been such a hairline crack, it would have been very difficult to detect with the naked eye. In fact, if we look hard enough, there may even be some other cracks in this porcelain, which doesn't look like there is. So, that guy would have started cracking. Could have been months and months and months ago. And when this piece is energized at 7,200 volts, the shortest path to ground or to a different potential is over to this bracket right here, traveling through that crack. But even though the porcelain's cracked, it doesn't, the crack doesn't magically become conductive. But what happens is as water runs down through that, and I know someone's gonna say water is not conductive, but it's, it's the impurities and the minerals and water and, and the dirt and dust that sticks to it and whatever. But that's gonna fill that crack and create a conductive path. As the electricity arcs down through and it ionizes the air, it's only gonna become more conductive until it establishes a real good path and starts tracking through the pole. This process could take hours before the pole bursts into flames. That also made me want to cover the ridges. They're just small ridges on a cutout like that. But you take an insulator, for example, and when you get close to the ocean, where you get a lot of contaminated kind of salt air, when the water evaporates, it can leave a layer of salt, which is conductive. Your conductor's tied in here. So this portion of the insulator kind of becomes a semiconductor a little bit. But the electricity is not gonna jump over those gaps. It's gonna wanna travel and of course, as you get the higher voltage, you get bigger gaps, but it actually has to travel around the surface and the underneath of each fin is generally a whole lot cleaner than the top. And then of course, when it rains, it does clean a lot of salt spray off and whatnot. Also, there's a greater distance for it to travel. So if let's say this material, this plastic, 7,200 volts, it requires, I don't know, four inches of insulation. By the time you measure each fin, there's probably a good, oh, at least at least a foot of surface space if you were to measure all the way in and out of each of those grooves. So generally speaking, when this type of insulator with the rubber or the plastic breaks down, you'll see, this is just a manufacturer's defect, but you can see the ripples in it. You'll see the plastic almost looks like it dries up and starts cracking. That's, that's when you know it starts to break down. Everything has a lifespan. It might, I don't know what these are good for, probably 35 years or so. But the porcelain ones are a little bit more dangerous because there could be hairline cracks in that. You could have your stick on the door, you yank that open, and it's gonna completely fall apart on you, just like this guy. So they generally don't break perfectly like this. Usually they shear off this way or crumble into a dozen pieces. Just wanted to show you guys that it's pretty cool. You can see really there's not a whole lot of insulation. As I said, this is this is live 7200 volts, and there's just that small gap that's isolating that from the bracket, which sometimes is a dead short because of a ground wire from a lightning arrestor or something else on the pole. Just wanted to show you guys that. Also, one little trick, as I mentioned, the hairline cracks can be extremely hard to see sometimes. So if you look on the back of the cutout where that grout is. You can see the grout is all burnt. When a cutout begins to fail, if there's some internal cracking or for whatever reason, if that's leaking, 
and there is some current flow through the cutout out into the bracket, generally you'll see that grout starting to bubble. It's supposed to be really smooth. This is a, a different type here, so it's not gonna work on these guys. This technology is a lot newer. There's not a whole lot of them in the field that are failing at the moment. Many, many years ago, they were using plastic insulators. I've got an area where there's all some old plastic and they're all starting to burn down. So they're all being currently replaced. So it's not that plastic or porcelain is any better than the other. They both have their advantages and disadvantages, but be careful around porcelain switches. Anytime you're operating a switch of any kind, make sure to take a good look at it. But yeah, that's what causes a pole to burst into flames is when an insulator is breaking down. So I'm gonna jump back in the truck. I uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. Hopefully in the near future, I will have a chance to do a lot more editing. A whole lot of stuff going on in my life right now. Not good, but that's neither here nor there. I appreciate you guys as always, and we'll see y'all soon.